Well, how about this? Is this not the coolest set of covers you've ever seen for a two-part story? This is Batman number 477 and 478, a Gotham tale. And this Tom Taggart claymation is awesome, right? And this is a throwback to uh, when Batman was actually a detective. So I thought we'd get into it. These are from May of 1992, back when Batman was bi-weekly. And I'm going to just go through this one real quick. This is uh, Gargoyles by John Wagner and drawn by Cam Kennedy. He doesn't have to search tonight. Doesn't have to course the city streets, listening for the scream, watching for the flash of still or the glint of evil in a man's eye. Tonight he knows, time and place. Good thing, too. Looks like rain. The Treasures of Canterbury exhibit is open at the Gotham Museum. Chop, chop, boys, we've all got homes to go to. Do be careful, Derek. That is not a frisbee you're carrying, please. Where did you say you worked before? U.S. still? The Shrine of St. Thomas Beckett. Now, here's something very interesting. This, this opening, this is all so interesting. I can't believe this isn't part of the actual story. The Shrine of St. Thomas Beckett. For over 300 years, pilgrims flocked to it from every part of England. The wooden cover protected the saint's bones. When it was raised, silver bells were rung to call the pilgrims. This is a reconstruction, of course. The original shrine was destroyed in 1538. The section of Thomas's skull chopped off by his murderers was held separately in the corona, but that was lost too. Fascinating, my dear, most fascinating. So much history, the treasures of medieval England. To have them here in Gotham, under one roof, it's a marvelous achievement. I thought you'd appreciate a private viewing after the crowds had gone. I do indeed. You're most kind to remember me after all these years. Ah, oh, Chaucer's pilgrims, en route to Canterbury. Whatever else you may think of him, Christina, your father's translation of the Canterbury Tales will remain one of the classics of the English language. You'll forgive me if I find it hard to take comfort from that at the moment. Are we going to be much longer, Miss Creighton? Hmm? Just a few minutes, Michael. It's a condition of our arrangement with the Canterbury Cathedral that the more portable objects be locked in the gallery vault while not actually on exhibition. Quite right. Can't be too safe. With care, Rodney, with care. They've managed to preserve that sainted hand for 800 years. We only have it a week. The least we can do is return it, digitus intactus. With the fingers attached, right? Get it? These cards just look like crap. This is right before cards started to look totally awesome. Here's Bass resting on the gargoyle, looking down over the museum, just waiting. What's he waiting for? We'll find out. I must say, you show remarkable fortitude, carrying on with the exhibition after all that has happened. My father died three weeks ago. This exhibition has been planned for over a year. I can't let personal grief interfere with my duty. Besides, the proceeds go to a very good cause. Your attitude does you credit. You've grown into a fine young woman, my dear. Little Christina. To think, all those years ago, I bounced you on my knee. It was a source of great regret to me when your father chose to send you away. Now you know why. To protect me from himself. And here come these guys with a sledgehammer. What's going on here? Batman leaps. You were his friend. You worked with him. In all those years, did you never suspect what kind of monster he'd become? No. As I said at the inquest... My part in his experiments was mercifully brief. I thought the whole foolish venture forgotten. I never once connected David with the gargoyle. Don't be too harsh on him, my dear. He couldn't help himself. It's hard for you to understand, but... The thing was stronger than he was. Bring! 
Here come some bad guys. What's going on, Batman? It's fine. This is not a shooting gallery. I'll thank you, gentlemen, to leave the premises. I'll thank you to drop dead. Boom! What? Are they here to rob all of these relics? No, no, they're not. Michael! I'm too late. Batman! I got a tip you maniacs might show up. They didn't tell me you were crazy enough to come in shooting. With Batman here, we can take him. You were warring, meatheads. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, excuse me. ka chow ka chow ka -chow. On my life. Stop this, stop this. Drop it. I'm going to see you murdering scum go away for a long time. Wrong, Batman. One more move and this babe's brains go on exhibition. That's better. What are we going to do with them? They're in the way. Kill them, I say. There's been enough of that. In the vault. That'll keep them out of our hair. You first. Come on, move it. You'll never get away with this. I'll find you. You have my word on it. We'll look forward to it. We'll bake you a cake. A Battenberg cake. <laughs> Clang. They slam the door shut. I heard a mechanism engage. This door? It's on a time lock? Yes, it, it opens at 7.30 in the morning to give them time to put the exhibits on display. I, I suppose we're stuck in here till then. Those poor souls, they won't be doing anything in the morning. At least we're safe in here. Be thankful for that. Those idiots, do you see what they've done? Anything they might have been able to carry away is in here. They've effectively locked up what they came to steal. Quite an irony. Not many criminals join Mensa, Doctor. You are Dr. Morris Eagleton, aren't you? Senior biochemist at the Gotham Institute. How did you know? You were the principal witness at the inquest of David Creighton, alias the Gargoyle. Your picture was plastered all over the papers. As you may know, I took a certain interest in the Gargoyle, too. And you, miss, you must be Creighton's daughter, Christina. You came over from England for the inquest? I was due to come in any case for this exhibition. My father's death was an unfortunate coincidence. And now, now three more of men have been murdered. It might not stop at three. This vault is airtight, isn't it? I, I believe so. They generally store paintings in here. It helps to preserve them. What's wrong? It's just after ten now. The vault doesn't open until 7.30 tomorrow morning. That's more than nine hours. At a rough calculation, I'd say we've got 5,000 cubic feet of air in here. You're the biochemist. You should be able to work it out for yourself. Three of us, allowing for factors of stress, level of activity, etc. My God, about three and a half hours. Say four hours max before the air runs out. But, but, surely help will come. That door is a Dodd Strutton 12 series. The same thing happened to a bank employee in Arkansas. It took five hours just to burn an air hole through. By that time, the bank employee had... Cashed in, as they say. Five hours. We've got four. Then, then we're all going to die. There is a, another solution. Not a very pleasant one, I'm afraid. Three of us won't make it. But two of us might. And the police show up. You know, beep, boop, beep, boop, 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 boop. They're sending for... <laughs> I like that Batman has this grail up to his head. They're sending for cutting equipment. Estimate 20 minutes. That's five and a half hours before they can be through. Tranquilizer darts. One puts you out. Three makes it permanent. Puts it in the collection plate. Time's running out. Leave it much longer, and there will only be enough air for one. We have to decide now. This is incredible. I can't take part in such a thing. It's a terrible prospect, my dear. But what Batman says makes sense. We must be realistic. It's one or all. And how do we choose who dies? Names in a hat? Draw straws? Eeny, meeny, miny, moe? You can't decide someone's life like that. 
The Canterbury Tales. That was all over a dinner, wasn't it? Whichever pilgrim told the best tale would be bought a dinner paid for by all. It seems appropriate, though our stakes are much higher. Let's leave Miss Creighton out of this, Doctor. The two of us will tell our tales. Why we should be the ones to live. Five minutes each. We haven't that much time. When we made our case, all three decide. But you're capable of killing either of us. If you're chosen to die, how do I know you'll go along with it? You have my word. I don't break it. Very well. I accept that. She reaches for the darts. Miss Creighton. Don't come any near. My mind's made up. Since we're all agreed on this desperate course of action, I won't allow you two to leave me out. You can hear my story first. But my dear Christina, I don't want any favors, doctor. Sit and listen. Perhaps I can save you a little air. I suppose I should start where it begins. I was ten. I was living with my father at the Institute. My mother had died the year before. For her sake, I'm grateful. You'll excuse me, Miss Creighton, but we don't have time for your life story. This won't take long. Please, do me the kindness of listening. I was never happy at the Institute. As you know, it's one of the finest Gothic buildings in Gotham, but to a ten-year-old child, it was a place of terror. Each dark recess held some imagined horror, waiting to pounce. Each carved gargoyle face seemed filled with evil intent, especially for me. Wherever I went, their eyes would follow me. Stone faces, cold eyes, but I was sure that they were alive, that they wanted to hurt me. And one night, it came true. Is, is somebody there? Daddy! He wasn't there. I thought he might be with you, Doctor. You often work together then. Yes. He'd ask my help with some formulae he discovered in an old manuscript. Jorix, the 13th century alchemist. Alchemy. If only I'd known what would come of it. You lived across the quadrangle. I remember I never got there. Somehow I found myself outside the Institute, and it followed me. And Batman's there, watching on. She runs, it's a dead end, there's a gargoyle. Do not be afraid, dear one. It will soon be all over. Crash! Batman's not gonna let you eat a child, you dirty gargoyle. Falls through the roof. I'll be back. You're safe now. Don't cry. You didn't know we'd met before, did you? You were that little girl? That was the first time I encountered the gargoyle. I gave chase, but it was dark. I lost it. When I returned, you were gone. The police found me wandering in the street. I couldn't speak. I was too terrified to tell them what had happened. It was two hours before my father could be located. A, a gargoyle came to life, Daddy. It, it, it... There, there, darling. Everything's all right. Poor little soul. Overactive imagination. It's been rough for her since her mom died. I'll take her home. I used her blood, Morris. Fool that I was. Just a few drops. That time she cut herself, that's all. I didn't think it would matter, but... I wanted more, Morris. Her blood. All of it. If... If Batman hadn't stopped me, I'd have killed her. Daddy, I can't sleep. You didn't think I remembered, did you, Doctor? You said at the inquest that you never connected my father with the gargoyle. You've said the same to me tonight. But you knew. I heard him tell you. Why did you lie, Doctor? What? What could I say? That I knew and kept quiet? All that time because... Because David was my friend? Misguided as it may have been? I... I wanted to protect him. Once David was dead, and with him the gargoyle, I... I saw no reason to implicate myself. I see.
A few weeks after that night, my father told me he was sending me away. He couldn't explain, but it would be safer if I went away for a while. I was to go to a boarding school in England. Arrangements had been made. I would leave immediately. When the killing started, the English papers soon picked up on it. But no one followed them with quite the cold, numb horror that I felt. I'd pray for him, pray for his soul, pray that what I'd heard that night had just been a dream. But I knew too, doctor. I felt each one of those deaths as if it had been me who killed them because I knew I could have told someone, I could have stopped it. But just like you, I did nothing. So much blood on my hands. That's why I can never ask anyone to die for me. Miss Creighton, no! To be continued. Luckily, we're going to continue that bad boy, aren't we? Boom. Boom. Let's do it. In that hour, the gargoyle stalks his prey, and spirit, benging spirit, speed the knell of Judgment Day. Smash TV, man. This, uh, this game was totally awesome. The cabinet, the arcade cabinet was oh, second to none, man. That game was great. So the cops, you know, they're still trying to figure out what's going on. Batman throws the batarang, whips it around her wrist, stops her from killing herself. You can't do that. Detectives are still, you know, hard at work outside trying to get in there. He drops the darts back into the collection plate. You hear that? They're cutting. Now I'll tell my tale, blah, blah, blah. Here am I, an old man, older than my years, perhaps. But still, I've had my fair crack at life. What have I achieved? Nothing of great note. In the matter of your father, Christina... In concealing the truth about him, as far as you are aware, I am as guilty as you. Then there is Batman, hero of Gotham, dark knight of justice. How many lives has he saved? How many evil doers has he placed behind bars? And he's young, strong, so many good years ahead, fighting crime, defending the weak and the innocent. Tell me honestly, my dear, who can you choose to live but him? I can't decide. You must, Christina. You have the deciding vote. A terrible burden on your young shoulders, I know. Never mind. Let me relieve you of it. I had no intention of keeping this foolish bargain in any case. Oh, if Batman had been the one chosen for Christina, it would have suited me well enough. For Christina, I could not have let you die either, unless it was by my own hand. What? What are you talking about? I don't like the turn of this conversation, Eagleton. Air's running out. Get on with it. Don't worry about air. Before long, I'm afraid, neither of you will need to breathe. Bum, bum, bum! What is this evil Morris Eagleton up to? Dear, dear Christina, you've convinced yourself the reason David hid you away in England was to protect you from himself. But you're wrong. Quite Quite wrong. You see, I am the gargoyle. What, what, are you, what are you saying? I heard my father confess. Oh yes, it's true. He was the gargoyle that first night. He did pursue you with murderous intent, but never again. I would have killed her, Morris. Just because I used her blood in the formula, I would have killed her. You have the rest of the formula. Get rid of it. After all the work we've done, you can't be serious. It's not what we thought we were creating. It's evil, Morris. Destroy it. Do you hear? But I couldn't just throw away the knowledge we'd gained, the secret we'd uncovered, not without knowing what it was like to experience it. Besides, it was mine as much as David's. He'd discovered the alchemist's manuscript, but he could never have handled the chemistry. I had a right to know. The Stone Man, Jorix called it. In our ignorance, we thought it was somehow connected with the ancient alchemist's search for the Philosopher's Stone, the stone that cured all ills and gave the bearer eternal youth. What we created was something different, much, much different, but in its own way, no less marvelous. What a creep.
The feeling of it, I cannot describe it adequately. The power, raw power, surging through every sinew. The hunger, ravenous, bestial, unreasoning. Every sense, every sensation magnified, as if everything before had been nothing but a, a dull parity of existence. I was alive, truly alive, for the first time. I came for you that night, Christina. It was your blood, more than any other, that I craved. It was your blood we used to complete the formula, to create the stone man. Only your blood would sate him. I suspected you had destroyed the formula, Morris. Where is she? With friends, where you can't reach her. I must have her. You must bring her to me. Never. Keep back, Morris. Or so help me, I'll shoot. You cannot keep her from me. You make the rules with the game, Genie. I went out into the city. I found two victims. Though their blood did not totally assuage my hunger, the sensation of ecstasy as I ripped them to shreds was almost overpowering. We met that night. I remember only too well. My altered state did not totally blot out reason. I recognized you as a danger, Batman. And they get in this big fight, right? We struggled, but I was stronger, Batman. I was stronger than Batman. These are details only the gargoyle could know. Ah, you're beginning to believe me now. The next day, David begged me to destroy the formula, but the gargoyle, as the press came to call it, already had too strong a grip on me. I felt some regret for the victims, of course, but it was nothing to the urge, the craving, to let him take possession of me again, to feel those dark desires pulsing in me. David threatened to go to the authorities, and I laughed at him. Mild-mannered academic turns into a raving monster. Who would believe him? A few days later, he sent you away, out of my reach. And all through the years, he kept quiet, cut me out of his life, and let you go on killing? I, I don't understand. Why didn't he just tell someone? Blame the gargoyle. It got its claws into him, too. Hate it though he might, he couldn't bring himself to commit that final act, to destroy what he'd created. Sixteen victims isn't many. You may scoff, but there could have been more, many more. But after our first encounter, I knew I must be more careful. I tried to ration myself. Besides, far from eternal youth, I could see the use of the formula was aging me. I suppose everything has a price. The infrequency puzzled me. That's what made you so hard to find. Then you decided to come home, Christina. The grand reunion. In a way... You can blame yourself for David's death. I've tried to dissuade her. She won't listen. She's deliberately arranged this exhibition as an excuse to bring us together. It was bound to happen sooner or later. It's fate, David. You mustn't stand in its way. Come. She's had a good life. Now she's coming home. To me. What? You know it's only right. She belongs to me. To the gargoyle. You know that. Perhaps when I have her, the bloodlust will die. Never! I should have turned you in long ago. What a fool I've been. Well, no more. You won't have her, Morris. The rest of the formula. Give it to me. Now come, David. I'll kill you if I have to. Will he? Let's find out. I could see that this time he meant it. You give me no choice. You want the formula? You shall have it. Opens up the top of his cane here, right? Pulls out the vial. And pricks him with it. What? What have you done? Such a small dose was not enough to affect the complete transformation. David had not developed the same affinity as I. But that worked to my advantage. There could be no doubt that David Creighton was the gargoyle. Bam! He attacked me. I fired in self-defense. Who would doubt me? You murdered him? He gave me no option. It was him 
or the gargoyle. Just a minute dose, but in my case, quite ample. Oh boy, and they're locked in that vault, no escape, air running out, what will happen? You see him taking his grip, crawling up my arm, eating his way into my soul. And that is why both of you must die, for the gargoyle must live on. He insists upon it. A pity, my dear. I would have preferred your death to occur under circumstances more of my choosing, to have savored the prospect, planned it to a nicety, perhaps a pleasant visit to my cabin in the mountains. Then I could have passed off the savage rending of your body as the work of an animal. You're sick! Yes, but gloriously so. And how do you explain our deaths, assuming you can add us to your victims? The effects will have worn off by the time the door is open. I'll think of something. I'm very resourceful. Quite a story, Doctor. Now it's my turn. Too late. There's no point in tales now. But you'll find this one very interesting. Before I entered this vault, I knew David Creighton wasn't the gargoyle. You knew? Oh, that Batman. Listen. That shook you, didn't it? That's it. How could you know? Some months back, I came across a paper by David Creighton in an old scientific journal, Theories of the Nature of the Stone Man. The creature he described, born an uncanny resemblance to the gargoyle. I plotted all reported sightings of the gargoyle. Sightings, not attacks. There was a definite concentration in the area of the Gotham Institute, where Creighton lived and worked. So I dug a little deeper. I found out Creighton, had sent his own daughter away a few days after the first gargoyle killing. That made him the prime suspect. Creighton? Not me? Batman! Don't worry, I can handle him. He grabs the tranquilizer darts. Creep got lucky last time. That's why he's been trying so hard to stay out of my way. Didn't like the idea of a return match. Oh, that bats. Hurry it up. Yes, you're right. Creighton was the suspect, not you. So I kept an eye on him. What's up, Doc? Tranquilizer getting to you? You remember the last time? 43rd Street? Young couple spread all over their apartment? You must remember, Doctor. I was watching David Creighton that night. He didn't leave his apartment. He wasn't the gargoyle that night, Doctor. Next thing I know, the gargoyle is dead, and it's Creighton. Something didn't add up. The missing part of the equation was you. At the inquest, it came out that you'd worked on this formula with Creighton. That made you prime suspect. And there were flaws in your testimony. Why was none of the formula ever found in Creighton's apartment? And why bring a gun to attack you? What use did the gargoyle have for a gun? Of course, nobody questioned too deeply. They were only too willing to believe they'd caught the gargoyle at last. They didn't know what I knew. Tranquilizer really hitting you now, Doc? Good. Don't want too much of that raw power on show when they come to take you away. I... I don't understand. We... we're all going to die in here. No, we're not. Not even you, unfortunately. Batman came to see me. I was never called as a witness. I suppose they thought I'd have nothing relevant to add, being so far removed from my father. I told him about your lie, about not knowing my father was the gargoyle. Oh, tape recorder. What? It confirmed my suspicions. But there was no hard evidence against you. If you were the real gargoyle, how could we prove it? Wait for the next attack? And what if I missed you? Some other innocent slaughtered? Maybe Miss Creighton? No, you had to be stopped. Now, flushed out into the open. 
She's all yours, Lieutenant. The gargoyle in the flesh. Nice work, Batman. You've been set up, pal. The, the time lock. Never engaged. But the robbery, the shootings, I saw. Blood packs. All a sham. An elaborate one, I'll admit. But it had to be convincing. You had to believe it. There was only one way you'd ever admit your guilt. You had to believe concealment no longer mattered. You had to believe you were going to die. A confession. That's all we needed. Didn't figure on you going one better. And giving us the rest of the formula. The Dark Knight prevails with some solid detective work. Like you used to see in Batman all the time. And that, my friends, my Knights of Crypto, my Crypto Knights, is the story of the Gargoyle. It is a Gotham tale, part one and two. Batman number 477 and 478 from May of 1992 with a stunning connecting cover by Tom Taggart. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please hit that thumbs up. Don't be afraid to hit that ding dong for notifications. I'll see you again right here on Crypto Comics. Legends of the Lone Wolf. 80 page full color anthology. With your support, we will bring you a perfect bound 80 page book of the highest quality. Everyone involved has donated their time and talent and all the money will go to printing and shipping before any of the creators turn a profit. Unlike other anthology books, Legends of the Lone Wolf contains a 38 page feature length supernatural story. That's nearly twice the size of a regular comic book. This campaign is the only way to get the variant aged edition of Lone Wolf's number one. This highly unique version of our first issue will be printed on a stunning aged newsprint and features a cover by the one and the only Mutt Man. So don't sit on your hands, Wolfomaniacs. You're gonna have to get out there and grab a copy for yourself. Ooh, yeah! Dig it!